Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. This is Jill. Have you wondered how you can make comfort and coziness an important part of your life by doing the simple things around you? That's what we'll talk about today. My best ideas come to me when I'm bored. I'd love to be bored more, but there just isn't time. Sam Reich, producer. Today, we're going to talk about a book called Huga, which is spelled H-Y-G-G-E. And you've probably seen a number of different things about it. But you know what? It's autumn in the Midwest of the United States. And there's no better time to think of this word than it is right now. And it's one of those things that is really hard to describe. There's a lot of different takes on it and a lot of different ways that people take it. But we're going to talk specifically about a book from Barbara Hayden. In general, she says that it's a feeling that we're cozy, friendliness, warmth. You know, it's really about that special place in life where you're feeling very content. And maybe you're with your family and your friends. A lot of times people relate it to that feeling you get at Christmas, that really warm happiness. I happen to like this particular topic because I love this feeling in general. I always have. Even before I heard this word, I've always strived to have that very warm existence. It is a lot about comfort, but it's about other things too. She mentions that this feeling has a lot to do with when you're sitting up and curled up with a cup of hot cocoa next to a fireplace, or you're having a really wonderful conversation with a friend. That wonderful lack of distraction, no noise, no TV, but just the joy of being with your warm cup of cocoa or your very close friend. That's what really makes everything matter. It helps us to slow down, be happy right at that moment. And I think it's important for us to have these little mini breaks in our lives so that we get that true comfort, that true rest when we're trying to get through our everyday struggles, our work, the snowstorm that's happening outside, we really want to make sure that we have those cozy moments. This is a concept that comes from the Danes, and they frame it as something that's a very simple thing to do, that we're missing so much in our lives because we're so rushed all the time, we're so busy all the time, and we can't just sit down and relax. We just can't sit there and have moments of comfort. They seem to think that the word comes from a Norwegian word, which the Danes used to be part of that nation state in the early 19th century. Seems to be related to the term of well-being. And she said more directly, the Danish word that's related to this is to give courage, comfort, and joy. And that has been what she says a really defining way of looking at the Danish culture. It's become so popular that you actually see things branded with the word in stores. Everyone's trying to pick up on this whole concept. And I think, too, even in other podcasts I listened to that talked about this topic, some of them were talking about, oh, well, you just have to be rich in order to get this kind of level of comfort. And I'll tell you that I was very poor. I was way up in the coldest parts of the United States, and I felt like I achieved this long before it was a popular thing, and with barely any money at all. Cozy Comfort was my middle name. I loved everything about it, and I found ways to get it, even when I didn't have money or the things to make it happen. You can actually do this with very little. She said the first step is to go find yourself a pair of warm woolen socks. Well, this helps for me because I'm a knitter. And you know what the very first thing I knitted? It was warm woolen socks. It helps if you can make your own socks so that they're perfect and exactly what you want. But you know what? It's super easy to buy woolen socks, too. And if you don't like wool, the idea is that they're just comfy. My friend likes to get those Polar Tech socks that are fuzzy and warm. But all it is is you just want comfy socks. Then you need a really soft blanket. And then a little place in your house, what she calls a cozy nook, or in Danish was a hugakrog, I think I'm saying that right, which just means a little comfy place that you can have and that you can just immerse yourself into this coziness. And then the next part is the lighting. You don't want to have this blaring lighting. I know when I'm working and I'm trying to get things done in my job 
or trying to get the podcast done. I like big, bright lights. But when you're trying to get that cozy atmosphere, you're really looking at less light. And you could do something fancy. I have those two light bulbs and they go from super bright, blaring lights that will keep you awake in the darkest nights to a very low, warm yellow. Some of them even go into other colors. But the ones that just go into the warm yellow to the bright lights are a lot less expensive. And it gives you that cozy, low light feeling. And if you can't do the hue light bulbs or color light bulbs, you can go the way that people have been doing this forever, which is candles, warm, soft light candles, because you want to be able to sit there and enjoy your warm, cozy experience without getting blasted by a bright light. I think, too, that means you have to think about how many electronic devices you have sitting around you blaring light at you. How many of your smart assistants do you have beaming a blue light into your brain? Bring it down. Warm, yellow, cozy lights. And this has a lot to do with indulgences, too. It means that every once in a while, you get a warm cup of cocoa. Maybe if you don't like the calories, you get a warm cup of tea or coffee. But you want to make sure that you have that indulgent, cozy feeling too. And sometimes it means a piece of cake or whatever it is that makes you have that warm feeling. We're not talking about this as a day in and day out, every hour of the day thing. You're trying to give yourself a cozy treat. You're trying to make yourself feel better and give yourself a sense of calm and peace in your life, a relaxation. It's almost like having a vacation in your chair. She says that a lot of times what people will do is make stews, soups, porridges, oatmeal, anything like that will help you in that cozy feeling. And there's a lot of soups and porridges you can make that aren't so high in calories and don't cost a lot of money. There's a lot of ways of getting this done so you can have that cozy experience. She talks about relaxing with a nice warm drink. And that, like I said, can be almost anything that gives you that sense of relaxation. A friend of mine and I were camping a couple of weeks ago and we sat around our fire pit drinking hot cocoa. And it had a little bit of cinnamon liqueur in it, which made it warm and inviting. It was just a nice moment and it was a really great way of getting away. So another great way of feeling cozy is getting rid of that TV and all those electronic devices and seeing if you can't sit in front of a fireplace. That is not an easy task for everyone. Not everyone has a fireplace. But is it possible that you can go someplace that has a fireplace? Or can you get one of those portable fire pits? Or go to a place like a campground that has the fire pits already there? And maybe even if you don't go camping, you can rent a campsite for a night Spend your time roasting marshmallows, drinking hot cocoa, and enjoying the fire for a low cost for one evening, and then drive home and and go back to your house. And there's even digital fires out there. But she says the goal of all of this is to produce satisfaction and a togetherness with the people that we love. She says that a lot of people think about this when they're thinking about Christmas or wintertime. I happen to start thinking about it right about now. When the leaves are falling and the chill in the air is starting to come in, makes me think of all these things that I love to do. Sitting under a blanket, having cozy socks, and drinking warm drinks. In her book, it's kind of interesting because she does give some recipes for some soups, for some mulled drinks like mulled wine. And there's all sorts of ways that you can do this easily. And most grocery stores sell apple cider. And all I have to do is throw a little cinnamon nutmeg in there and toast it up in a microwave and you have your own warming drink without much fuss and without a lot of money or investment. She says in the end, we're trying to create, quote, a shelter from all of life's storms. And so it's not even just about the storms that are outside our window. It's about the storms that are going on in our lives. Can we produce a cozy moment in all of that? She gives a comparison about what the American lifestyle is compared to the Danish lifestyle. And she says, and I find this to be pretty true, the American lifestyle is you pop out of bed, quickly make it. You gulp down a coffee, maybe you eat a breakfast bar on your way out, and you try to get to work on time. Then you rush through your day trying to get on emails, and then you go pick up your kids, and then you rush home. 
and it's very intense and it's very busy all day long. She says the Danish lifestyle isn't quite like that. The Danish lifestyle is more like you get a very nice sleep, you wake up very well rested, maybe even candles in your house when you wake up. You turn on the candles instead of that blasting light. Make sure that you get a cup of cocoa or that amazing cup of coffee and you have some Danish rye bread, she says, and your day is calm. Your morning is calm and you start off the day without that rush. Perhaps you get a big bowl of oatmeal and you put some fruit and nuts in it. And then you get ready for your work. You talk to your colleagues. You say hi. You find out how they're doing. And then you plan to get outside. And then throughout your day, you'll spend some time in the cafe. Then you'll get on your bike and then you'll go home. It sounds like a very peaceful and relaxing way to live. And not all of us can be Danes. Many of us cannot live that life. But I think that the important part of this book is providing that environment, that location in our homes that gives us that escape, even for a little while, despite the fact that we can't live like a Dane every moment of our day. She says it's important to to have the right color scheme, that mostly you get this very natural lighting in the house. It's very soft. The colors are very soothing and neutral. And there's a lot of sensibility and lack of clutter in the house. You want to have quiet music. And I think it's interesting because you can tell that she really loves this lifestyle. I would want to live in a house like this all over the place. Can I have a comfy, warm corner that I can put my cup of hot cocoa on and enjoy a good book, listen to some classical music just for an evening? Absolutely. Would I want to live that way every day? For me, maybe not. For her, she absolutely loves it. But you can decide how much of your life should take on those aspects. But she said that the important thing is that you keep things simple, that you use all the senses. We talked in episode 48 about the kitchen of the mind, which is about using all your senses to create a mood or a certain atmosphere. You could take the lessons from that particular episode of the podcast and apply it to this. How can we make a particular corner, a particular time in our lives to get all the senses involved in creating that sense of comfort, warmth, and coziness? She says it's important, not only just for the socks, but for us to have the comfy clothes, the layered look with sweaters and socks galore. I don't know if that's what makes you comfortable, but you have to make this about what you like to do. So find whatever you find to be the pinnacle of comfort clothes. Is it your favorite pair of sweatpants? Is it your favorite t-shirt? Or is it that favorite sweater that you bought at a shop a few years ago? Make sure that you're comfortable in what you're wearing. She also adds in that huga is an excuse to get away from your low-carb diet. Go for the grog and the mulled wine and eat a treat that makes you feel cozy. She says that you can also incorporate crafts into this. You know, things that you make around your home. I've done some quilting before. I've also done some knitting before. And I'll tell you that when I look at the comfortable things in my house that makes me feel cozy, a lot of it has to do with the things I've made myself. I really am no great artist. I'm not great at any of it. But when I look at those things, it makes me feel like I'm at home. So don't be intimidated if you want to try this. There's ways that you can do this for a short time. There's a way that you can do this everywhere in the world. And there are ways of doing it for very little money. You don't have to be a person of wealth to make Huga happen. You can do this on any kind of budget, in any season, and in any time, and for any amount of time. Bring in that comfort, that coziness, and that simplicity that makes you feel at home and indulgent and happy. Our fun entertainment advice of the week comes from Ed Wood with Martin Landau. Too constrictive. I can't even fold my arms. Gee, Mr. Lugosi, I've, I've never had any complaints. This is the most uncomfortable coffin I've ever been in. Your selection is quite shoddy. You're wasting my time. I guess comfort matters in everything, even when you're a star of horror movies and you want a new coffin. 
All right, everyone. Thanks so much for listening. I appreciate that you're out there. Have a great week. Be safe and think about how you can be the best you possible.